If you had to name a single tank that embodies the European approach to modern armoured warfare, a thoughtful blend of precise firepower, solid crew protection, and reliable logistics, it would likely be Leopard 2. Its roots reach back to the second half of the Cold War, yet with continuous upgrades it remains one of the most effective and most widely fielded tanks in the world. Today we'll break down why that is, how it evolved, what sets it apart from competitors, and where the latest versions are heading. Leopard 2 emerged as a logical evolution of the Leopard 1 concept, but also as a response to lessons from the 1960s and 1970s. The rapid emergence of Soviet 125mm guns, the mass proliferation of PTRZHS, and takeaways from the Yom Kippur War all showed that mobility instead of armor was no longer enough. German industry therefore redirected development toward a tank combining higher ballistic resistance with significantly stronger firepower and top-tier fire control. A key milestone was the collapse of the ambitious American-German project MBT-70 slash KPZ-70, an overpriced and overcomplicated program that failed, yet left valuable technologies behind, high-performance suspension, new sensors, crew protection concepts. German prototypes Kieler slash Leopard 2 followed on, testing various configurations and calibers, 110 slash 120 millimeters. From these came Leopard 2 AV, a ballistically tuned variant that, in the mid-70s, underwent trials in USA. Although the Americans ultimately chose XM1 Abrams, the Germans gained a proven platform with the potential to mature rapidly into series production. The Bundeswehr's decision came in 1977, and the first Leopard 2s reached units at the end of the 70s. Even early batches carried the DNA that would define the tank for decades, a 120mm smoothbore Raj Metal RA-120L-44, a powerful and compact powerpack MTO-RENK delivering roughly 1,500 horsepower, and a robust transmission enabling very rapid take position, fire, relocate cycles. Equally important was the crew survivability philosophy. Ammunition moved mainly to the turret bustle, strict compartmentalization, automatic fire suppression, and full protection against WMD. Leopard 2 has a crew of four and manual loading. German designers thus preserved high reliability and a fast rate of fire without an automatic loader, which is typical of some other concepts. The armor is multi-layered and modular, combining steel with non-metallic materials. The exact composition is classified, but the aim is clear. Defeat modern sub-caliber projectiles and shape charges in the frontal arc. The main armament is a 120mm smoothbore Raj Metal, originally L-44, which in versions of 6 and later was replaced by the longer L-55, respectively L-55A1. This increases muzzle velocity and improves the effectiveness of sub-caliber rounds. Leopard 2 also employs programmable Der M11 ammunition. The fuse is set electronically so the round detonates above, in front of, or directly inside the target, useful against defilated positions, light vehicles, or drones. Modern versions received improved sights and digital fire control that let the crew very quickly find, hit, move. At the heart of the vehicle is a 12-cylinder diesel MTOMB 873K-501, producing around 1,500 horsepower, made it to a Harris VL354 transmission. Even in today's heavier configurations, Leopard 2 maintains a good power-to-weight ratio, brisk acceleration, and high road speed. Exactly what you need for battlefield dynamism, take position, fire, and keep moving. During the first evolutionary wave, a 0 to A4, development focused on maturing sensors and lethality. The stabilized M's 15 site with a laser rangefinder, improved thermal images, and a reliable digital fire control system gave Leopard 2 exceptional first round hit capability at long range, even in degraded conditions. A4, with its iconic boxy turret, became the mass standard, exporting widely and forming a broad base for modernization across Europe. The second evolutionary wave began with A5. It brought a wedge-shaped turret add-on with markedly improved frontal protection, reworked internals, and detailed ergonomic changes. Leopard 2A6 followed with a longer L-55 barrel, boosting muzzle velocity and the performance of modern sub-caliber penetrators, key to maintaining an edge against the hardest targets. Later A7-A7A1 variants tackled the power and data fight, more powerful generators, air conditioning, digital networks, enhanced situational awareness, and, on German configurations, integration of trophy active protection to improve resilience against PTRZHS. Through all these changes, the core philosophy stayed strikingly consistent. Big, dependable engine power for maneuver, 
modular protection centered on crew survival, and first-rate accuracy in rapid engagements, backed by top-tier optronics and programmable munitions. That is why Leopard 2 could flow smoothly from the boxy A4 to deeply rebuilt A5 Plus generations without losing its fundamental driving qualities. A decisive factor in Leopard 2's success is logistics and the shared ecosystem. Spares, training, upgrade kits, and compatible ammunition across dozens of users. After 2023, Leopard 2 also appeared in Ukraine, Germany, Poland, Spain, Canada, and other states delivered dozens of vehicles. In combat it showed strengths, but also that without proper tactics, infantry escort, and engineer support, even a modern tank is vulnerable to mines and PT weapons. Drones proved to be a major problem. Active defensive systems can provide protection, but going forward such tanks will need accompaniment by systems like Gepard. In Central Europe a clear Leopard map is taking shape. The Czech Republic accepted a donation of 28A4 from Germany and subsequently approved a plan to procure up to 77 newly built Leopard 2A8 in cooperation with Germany. The Defence Ministry this year, 2025, formally approved the purchase of 44 vehicles as Phase 1. The goal is a fuller-fledged heavy brigade by 2030 and strong industrial cooperation. In 2024, the government also decided to buy another 14 Leopard 2A4 and created a separate tank brigade. There is speculation about later reassignment to active reserves. Slovakia, within the German Ringtorsch, received 15 modernized Leopard 2A4 as a replacement for equipment handed to Ukraine, a crucial bridge to future heavy forces and an entry ticket to the Leopard ecosystem. The Defense Ministry plans to buy another 102 tanks, and the A8 version was expected. However, recent reports mention a possible purchase of the South Korean K2 in the Polish PL variant or Sweden's light tank CV90120. Meanwhile, Hungary is massively rejuvenating its armored branch. It ordered 44 Leopard 2A7 HRO, with deliveries through 2025, significantly shifting the regional balance of capability. Croatia also joined the Leopard Club on the 28th of October 2024, signing with Germany for up to 50 Leopard 2A8 under favorable conditions in exchange for handing over part of its M-84 and M-80 stocks to Ukraine. The contract awaits domestic approval. Deliveries are referenced from 2027 to 2028. Austria is already a member of the Leopard Club. Vienna decided to modernize its A4 fleet under the Bundeswehr 2032 plan. Based on it, 58 vehicles will be upgraded, electronics, sensors, and turret drives to the A7 level, inside A7, outside A4. The first returned vehicles from KENDS are expected from 2026, with completion between 2028 and 2029. Reports have also mentioned purchasing a similar number of A8 and establishing a new tank battalion. Central Europe has thus become the first purely Leopard region. Beyond Central Europe, Nordic and overseas references are growing. Norway in 2023 ordered 54 Leopard 2A8 plus an option for 18 with active protection. Sweden in January 2025 announced the purchase of 44 Leopard 2A8 alongside modernization of older vehicles, joining the newest standard user base. The Netherlands in May 2025 announced its own purchase of 46 Leopard 2A8 to rebuild a national tank battalion after the era of a joint battalion with the Bundeswehr. Lithuania in 2024 to 2025 joined as a new customer and is moving to build a tank battalion on the Leopard 2A8 platform in cooperation with Germany. First deliveries are expected in the second half of the decade. In total it plans to buy 44. Outside Europe, Canada operates a mix of Leopard 2A4M and 2A6M and, in 2024, contractual secured long-term support for all variants. In Asia, Stalwarts include Singapore's Leopard 2SG and Indonesia's Leopard 2RI. In the Middle East, Qatar Field 62 of the 2A7+. South America operates Leopards in Chile. These fleets may be older, but they continue modernization and sustainment programs that keep the Leopard ecosystem active and compatible with newer standards. In Europe today, the tank is used by roughly 15 countries. Globally, it's more than 20 states, with the exact count fluctuating depending on whether you include temporary and new operators such as Ukraine and recent customers. The newest Leopard 2A8 standard keeps the type at the very top even in the second half of the 20s. It brings strength and protection, including the integration of active protection to customer requirement, a modernized gun L-55A1 with a full spectrum of contemporary ammunition, a more powerful electrical system, and a digital backbone for rapid integration of new sensors, BMS, 
and see Dash OAS elements. In practice, the platform is ready for further drop and packages. New thermals, turret sensors, heavier era slash APS, a CWS for counter drone work, without altering the core architecture. In parallel runs the Franco-German MGCS program, slated in the coming decade to deliver an entirely new family of combat systems. Not just a tank but a modular ecosystem with manned and unmanned components, a stronger caliber, and a fully network-centric architecture. Until MGCS matures, Leopard 2 remains the bridge, continuously improved, fully networked, and able to field the later sensors, weapon stations, and active protection, backed by Europe's existing logistics base and strong industrial capacity. Leopard 2 did not arise as a one-off leap but as a series of deliberate steps, from lessons learned with Leopard 1 and the failure of MBT-70, through sealing the ballistic envelope and moving risk away from the crew compartment, to steadily increasing weapon and sensor performance. That discipline of incrementalism, rather than a one-big-bet revolution, has let it stay at the top for decades and become a platform worth modernizing again and again. If you enjoyed the video, I'd be happy if you could like, share, leave a comment with your opinion, and subscribe with the notification bell on, so you won't miss any future videos.